Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to Felting Fun with Steph and Joe. Hello, hello. <laughs> and in case Great you don't back. know, I'm Stephanie Lester, <laughs> and I'm Joe Lockhead. We've always got that right. <laughs> Did I say it wrong? Did no, I, no, I not? <laughs> no, I said I, I actually pointed the right way because I'm always thinking, am I pointing that way? Not, but I got oh yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not <laughs> going to risk the pointing. I think. <laughs> Yeah, hands, down, <laughs> hands down excellent so so yes. our um, main thing today is tools isn't it yes yes we're going to be looking at all different kinds of tools uh we decided that stephanie's tools were bigger than mine <laughs> um <Okay>. my, <laughs> mine are mine are only little but i've got a few of them all so, good things come in small packages that's what they say <laughs> <laughs> apparently <laughs> downhill very rapidly we're only two minutes in i know i um, know <laughs> doesn't take long does it? <laughs> <laughs> I love it I love it I think that we're going to um we're going to go to me first and I'm going to show you um my sort of tools of the trade um I don't you really use anything very fancy um but one of the things that I do use is actually going to be my giveaway for today oh so I'll just show you that now before yeah. I move to the overhead camera so this you got one of these right Stephanie yeah, I don't yeah. use them, but you that's... don't use them. So this is a Clover brand um, brush. Um, it's quite dense actually, and with all Clover tools, you get really good quality. So it's um, it's not you know it's quite it's quite it's an investment if you like. This so they, they do them in two different sizes, and I bought this years ago when I thought I would just have a go at needle felting, and I just thought, oh, this is just like the surface that I'm going to felt onto. I um, but I didn't really get on with it at the time until I discovered 2D needle felting. Yeah. And it is a game changer for that. It's just, and I'll demonstrate it um, in the in my little um, demo. So this is my giveaway. One of these, all you need to do is to like and subscribe to our YouTube channels um, to be in with a chance. And then we'll use our random generator. And make, and make a comment below in your... And I will also say yes. anybody who actually subscribes to either of our channels, if they click on the little alarm, um, it's like a little yes. bell, if they click on that, then they'll automatically be told when we're going to go like so for our next premiere. Because some people are saying, oh, I didn't realise it was on. If you click that little alarm, you'll be told when the next show is and you won't miss anything. So that's, that's a really all. good. Well but remembered. no, I, I, I absolutely love those little brushes for what they do. But I use something else now, which I'll go into when I go to my tools. <laughs> which yes. is a bigger expenditure. So oh, that is course. actually, you know, really good, as you say, for the flat, the 2D, and um, yeah, yeah, I'll show yeah. you later. Good. So, okay, cool. so shall we move over to my... Um... Well, shall I show what my freebie is? Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about, it's all about you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Although sorry. it is in a way, because my freebie is one of your, let's call them retro kits, shall we? Yeah, vintage, vintage. Oh look! Someone brought it up on the on the group the other day and was saying they they bought some and I have some um, still in my stock. But I was saying, well, actually, what would people um, got a little bit anxious about the idea of it being on a piece of wood as a sort of um, what do you call it? Um, trophy. trophy but what would be a really nice thing would be to put it through one of the little wreaths that you can get it's from, really good and idea. then it's peeking through so that would be lovely so I thought what I'll do is I'll give away is little heather hair but with a little mm. wreath so you can have a play around with that and see that's a brilliant yeah. idea I suppose you could actually would you need to put it onto some kind of backing to secure it to the wreath do you well, think you could actually just sort of um, make sure you felted it into the bottom and have a little wire into the top I would just make sure it was attached to the bottom at the top and then it'll be coming through but yeah it would look lovely it looked like it's poking its head through yeah poking its head through Woo. perfect her head yes <laughs> gorgeous there you go. so once Great. again yeah um subscribe like comment and then we'll do the big reveal because you know as we said before we came on air sarah was, sue was the lucky lucky girl one on all levels <laughs> last time amazing <laughs> 
there you go so deserving though no, yes yeah. absolutely yeah. absolutely that <laughs> okay so we're going to come over to you first yep there we go i'm going to use the, the, the creaking of the the stool there we go <laughs> so i have got a whole selection of um, bits and bobs to show you and I'm just going to run through so there's nothing terribly um, exciting or groundbreaking in my selection of tools but sometimes it's just interesting to just to see what other people use yeah, isn't it? see what you do use for different jobs type thing exactly yeah. so I'm kind of addicted to these wool mats yes and although it looks like I've got one huge one I've actually got three <laughs> sitting here <laughs> in different colors so um, they're just such yummy colours as well. Yeah. So I tend to have, um, sometimes I've got a project on the go and I just kind of keep the project on it and that sits, you know, somewhere else. I used to do this with beading as well. I used to have a bead board or a bead mat on a tray that had a, a project on it and then I would just stack all of the trays up with a different project. <laughs> so this is the biggest um, mat and this is this really cute one is the smallest one and these are really good if you're traveling just to, to pop in your in your luggage they're also quite good for doing the little nookie bits if you really want to get under an arm or something when you're trying yeah. to yeah the little nookie bits yeah <laughs> brilliant okay now i also just to try to keep them a bit clean although as you can see hmm, i don't always remember <laughs> i use a piece of felt over the top and then you can always replace the felt but it's it just keeps the mat underneath it a bit cleaner so felting mats essential tool yeah and lovely that they're they're all wool as well um these come from the factory that we use in nepal um this is not a tool but i'm just <laughs> going to tell you what this is just because it's there so this little piece of masking tape is so that when i'm taking my step-by-step -step photographs if i have to move uh, anything i know that I, I know it's not lined up at the minute yeah. but i know you know according to where my camera is if i put my felting mat down there it's always going to be in the same place there you go so there's a little tip for you if you are taking photographs and you want everything to be in the same place i just mark it with that um so the brush tool the clover brush tool brilliant for your 2D felting and here's one I prepared earlier people might recognize this from this month's club box and the brush tool works really well with this guy so this again is clover it's a five needle um so it has a should be able to yeah, there we go. Bit. It has a safety thing on there so it's five needle tool and um, you don't need to use it with all five needles but it's great for quickly felting all over and with just in exactly the same way as your work would stick to a wool mat it does tend to stick to the brush as well so just kind of remember to peel it off every every so often you can see how fluffy that is on the other mm -hmm. side um, it really does help to push the fibres all the way through the felt. Looks very neat on the other side, though. Oh well, it's not. Mm. It's a not like um, cross stitch or embroidery. It's not deliberately neat. It's just the, <laughs> just, just because the wool's all pushed through. But yeah, kind of like a watercolour. Yeah. So that's the clover tools, and the other clover tool, which I'm actually I'm having a little look around to see if it's, I've got it. It's not one that I use very often and I might have just put it away. Just excuse me while I stretch, stretch over here. Right, it might turn up while I'm talking, but it's the claw tool. So do you oh, know, okay, I see it. Yes, I think I've got one. Yeah, I've just popped it away in this drawer. So this thing here. That's it, yeah. Yeah, so this is really good, although I don't use it very often, but you can use this for cleaning. So it'll just pick up fibres off your, your brush or off your mat. But you can also use it if you want to mix, blend a small amount of wool. So this little kind of rakey end will help to do that. And you've also got um, a brush end here as well. So handy tool, but it's not one It's great for combing your long haired pieces as well. If you've got um, an item <laughs> where you've you actually done the reverse needle and thought and you can yes. comb. Yeah. That's combing your felted makes, not yeah. your own long hair. Yes yeah okay um i've got this 
love that. I use this a lot. So this is what I call my pokey tool. Yeah. Um, officially called an awl. And I love this because it is nice and tapered. So mm -hmm. you could use a felting needle. You could use something else that's sharp, you know, but I love the fact that it's tapered. So you can really, if you need to make a bigger hole for pushing a leg or an arm into something or, you know, popping something onto a, a piece of wire, you get that with this. So this is a, something definitely to invest in. Although actually- yeah, I use those all the time. Yeah. Um, my handy pink clover pen, use this all the time. I've just got two needles in this at the moment, but this is, um, yeah, I, I love this. Sometimes I use the tool that just takes one needle. This is also handy for traveling because the needle pops back inside the handle. Mm. I am good for just a single needle. I'm just going to show you this, but I never use it. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I love it. I don't know if you can see, it's quite dark, but can you see that yes. this is also by Clover? Yeah, you can see and that. Yeah, it's beautiful, Very but cute. it's actually, it's, it's a little bit small. It's so, funny, is it? I don't get on well with finger protectors either, but one time um, I had cut my finger and I put a plaster around it, yeah. and that actually gave my finger quite a lot of protection oh. when I was doing something quite up close, but I sometimes find those little um, finger things, they're just a bit too tight or a bit too thick. Yeah. I've got a whole, I've got a few here in a bag Ooh. that I sometimes take along if I'm doing a workshop because there's yeah. always somebody who says, oh, you know, that, you know, do they, do they have anything to protect your fingers? Yeah. So I do have those. But no, I don't, I just don't get on, apart from the fact that this would cut my blood supply off, I think, if, yeah. I, if I used it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, um, yeah, I prefer to, it's like, I don't know, playing the piano with the gloves on or something. Uh, the other thing that I use a lot are a pair of sharp snips really handy for giving your felted make a little trim getting rid of all the loose fibers and yeah. snips i find although i do also use little scissors little Very embroidery scissors. scissors are great um i just i like the snips because you can get really close in yeah and they're just they're quite satisfying to use so sharp snips or scissors uh when it comes to wire <laughs> If you are needing to twist any wire or cut any wire, quite handy to have in your toolbox. A um, couple of pairs of pliers. So I've got my um, flat nosed pliers. These ones are actually serrated. So if you've got ones that are smooth, even better because the serrated ones will mark your wire. Um, so a pair of flat nose pliers and I've also got a pair of wire cutters. And again, these are left over from my jewellery making days. Um, yes, if you I don't have... see that. So yeah, they're very yeah. good ones. <laughs> they're nice they're quite small um and neat but if you don't have wire cutters you can just you can use a pair of old scissors but just be aware that it will blunt them yeah but the yeah um, flat no. old scissors the old scissors definitely and a couple of other things i am um, my favorite blue <laughs> Um, if I do have to use glue, I try not to use glue unless absolutely necessary. But sometimes a little spot of glue, for example, behind a, behind an eye to keep it to keep the eye in place. Um, but Gorilla Super Glue Gel is really good, super strong, but it's not too runny. Mm. So you don't, you know, it's um, it's don't quite neat. yourself to the piece. Exactly, that <laughs> that has happened, but yeah. um, just I was being careless. So I highly recommend this, and then. One more thing to show you, it's not really a tool, but it's just something that is quite handy to have mm. if you are sorting out your makeup, if you wear makeup, and you have any old brown eyeshadow. I think this was actually an eyebrow um, thing. It's quite useful for adding a bit of color. Yeah. Um, to your makes without actually adding any wool so you can use a little brown eyeshadow or in fact a little bit of eyeshadow or a little bit of pink blusher mm. you know there's lots of different colors of makeup that you can use and you can add on to your felting now some people might think that's cheating 
And I actually think it's just part of the artistic no, process. I don't think it's cheating at all. And also, you know, sometimes if you just wanted to get a little bit of dark ground and eye and you're just really struggling with getting that little bit of wool in, just to do a little bit of colour like that, perfect. Yeah, I agree. And it's actually, there is no thing, there's no such thing as cheating nope. when it comes to um, nope. needle felting because it's just whatever whatever you um works for you so yeah absolutely absolutely that's all my little tools um i don't have anything big and fancy like steph stephanie's going to show you in a second <laughs> um, but these are the things that i use all the time and i hope that's been useful for you and uh, yes i keep my needles just in that into this into one of these massive yeah. ridiculous number of needles in there um so there we go so i'll come oh, it's brilliant excellent no it's really good i'm gonna um initially come over to my um map because there's just a couple of things i was going to say that um instead of finger protectors i sometimes use a business card to oh, hold yes. pieces in my hand and do that bit um, yeah. i do have my clover tool but i also have an eyebrow brush ah i've got one of those actually yeah. I never thought I could use it. which i use um it could be you know, you've got a little tuft like you know if you're doing a little draft or something you've got a little tuft and you just want to give it a, a proper brush out or a little mane or anything like that it's just really useful for pulling out the little pieces the other oh, yeah. thing i do often use is a, a big needle because sometimes when you've got a piece and you've got it almost there and you think I don't really want to add any more wool you can use the needle just to and it needs to be a strong needle because otherwise you'll break it but you can mm -hmm. just eat, pull it back out again basically you know pull pull the eyebrow out rather than actually oh I need to add a bit more on and a bit more on so I always have many needles as well for yeah that. are you talking about like a darning needle or something well these are doll making needles <clears throat> they're, oh, they're very long aren't they but anything which is thick so a darning needle that's a darning needle that would do that yes um but long as it's strong and not just a thin needle because you want oh, to yes. sort of eke it out just to... and actually i've done exactly what you're describing but i've used a felting needle and i've ended up breaking the tip of the felting needle yeah. so that's why use a nice a big strong needle you were saying that you use um the clover tool to sometimes mix some colors up mm -hmm. um obviously i've got my big um, things behind me that I'm going to show but I also use dog brushes oh yes <laughs> so Love I'm that. just gonna very quickly because you can mix colors just by you know pretending it's a blending board and yeah so these are, are these a much more economic version of um carding yes hand carders so they're not as big and they're much much cheaper and you literally just brush it off and on and if you've got a piece that's a bit um matted together it it makes it nice and fluffy as well but a couple of colors put on there and you mix it together in no time at all but yeah carders you're oh. they're going to be much bigger and they're much more expensive cat yes. or dog cat brushes are obviously smaller these are dog brushes if i'm doing a little piece for a little job perfect just and do you think that if people go onto amazon and and type in dog brushes yeah that's what you'll see. Amazing. Yeah. Great. Usually it. like two, three quid, something like that. A lot cheaper than... Oh, amazing. I know. <laughs> That's what I use. <laughs> Pop that. Um, <clears throat> I was also just going to say when I... Um, if you've seen any of my sort of tutorial things, I often talk about creating shapes around things. And um, I often use things like this. So that if I'm making something i would um wrap it around what is that steve and this uh, this is um like a bobbin thing i found it at an antique um event and of course once again it tapers which is quite yeah. useful if you want to actually have something but i just you know wrap things around and then i've got myself my little sausage to start off with but i have knitting needles yes. the, any size all just to wrap around and do. not specially bought just grab even um a wooden spoon handle will do yes you know, just i have an and array actually, of things like that around i'm just the, looking over at my um my little tool box which is full of nonsense knitting needles the knitting you know, needle no. tip is really good actually if you wanted to create some curly locks um if you dampen the wool and you pull it out so that it's quite you've got quite a long strand and then wrap it around a knitting needle tightly and leave it to dry yeah 
pretty I cool. I also use for that purpose. Let me get my little curling tongs. Oh yeah, let's have a look. Brilliant. Oh, they're really fine, aren't they? So yeah. So you yeah. wrap it around and then you don't have to wait for it to dry. Give it a good old yeah. and it's done instantly. In the same process of that, in, yeah, we talk about ironing our pieces sometimes yes. if you want to get an, uh, an ear. Um, hair straighteners. Oh, yes, Scott, yes. Hair That's straighteners really for that. So if you need a nice big, a nice flat ear and put it in. And then that's what just, I use for that yes. rather than having to have a, an ironing thing around to do. And I would have shown my... Um, the little clover ironing, you know, the little yes, mini Yes, I've got one of those too, actually. <laughs> They're great. Well, I, got, I had some, but they, but some people went and bought them. So <laughs> <laughs> I need to get some more. <laughs> but they're really good because they, because they, the plate is really small, so you can get into really small areas without... Get you know, into the, the little, little, little bits, can't you? Get right into yeah. the little... So I was going to say to you um, about your mat... This yes. is my needle felting machine, as it's called, mm -hmm. and it's called the Solar Bee one. And um, there are many of them about, and this one I particularly love because it doesn't vibrate and it's great. But one of the reasons I use it is because when I'm doing um, what I would call flat pieces like ears and a leaf or a scale on something, it basically, if you think about it, it goes in and out at exactly the same um, length so mm -hmm. I can actually hold it so it's just off so that's why I don't need to use the brush or anything like that because I can now if I was just deciding I wanted to do um, a little shape mm -hmm. in fact you'll be able to hear how loud it mm -hmm. and I can just keep it not too far and it just mm -hmm. felts in place pull it over mm -hmm. and I will be able to pull this off the mat really really easily because mm -hmm. it is just felting not going right through into the mat that. then no and it's ah. and and Steph what would you say were the advantages of using the using the tool so I use it when I'm going to do 400 of something. <laughs> so, okay, talking about the scales. Yeah, so if I'm yes. doing scales or something like that and I'm going to do a lot of it, then I will do that because obviously I could make an ear by myself and be really careful. But if also there are some people who suffer greatly from arthritis and, uh -huh. and I've been introducing it to those people as well because when they would need to do detailed work is where they really struggle. They're probably fine with a big needle when they're doing the big... Um, overall size piece but when it comes to doing intricate pieces they mm -hmm. can't quite get so it can be quite good because of course you've actually got a good old hold on this yes. and then you can just put it in place I also when I did my elephant which was huge yes. now this is where it suits my type of felting and not necessarily everybody else's that I build up layers mm. so if you're going to do a big chunk this isn't going to felt right into the center of your mm -hmm. piece it's just mm -hmm. going to be adding layers as you go which suits my felting uh, yes. when I'm doing a really big piece so it's not for everybody but those are my main reasons for using it and I do absolutely love it this is a single needle one there are multi-needle ones which I did nearly get for Christmas but that's a really long story and we won't go into oh <laughs> for another time <laughs> that's for, definitely for another time but this and, one's and called Steph, solar bee and it is as you as you solar probably bee. heard hopefully it's not too loud it doesn't really vibrate i did try another one which did really really vibrate and it was horrendous and i couldn't possibly that would have be, used it yeah that wouldn't be really good for your your hand or your arm no. would it? i don't think and and where can people buy this so you can get them from Etsy. Now, obviously i haven't rechecked really because an awful lot of the people i used to buy from are in the ukraine Mm -hmm. so um, if they are still selling for goodness sake still buy off them because they'd love your money and I know some of those people who sell from the Ukraine sell via the USA so they may still be able to supply but Etsy is where you can go on and actually have a look but um, Interesting. yeah there you go okay. but there, that's Good. that's my <laughs> some people think that's cheating as well Joe so whatever <laughs> what? yeah. we, we, don't listen, we don't listen to that <laughs> let me turn that off and the good thing about that is as well is I've, I had 
which I didn't actually show you, there is this little power thing, and you can make it go faster. Oh. So it can go really fast. I have that on quite low, but you can actually have it go yes. really fast or slow. Or... It scares and some can... people because it's a, a needle going in and out very fast, but, you know. It's... Yeah, yeah. I could... Different people. I can, I can see that. And, and Steph, just out of interest, how much are you looking at for, for one of those cost-wise? Yeah, I'm just trying to remember now. I think off the top of my head, they're like 120 quid. Okay, yeah. I think that's, yeah, it's that ballpark anyway, isn't it? It's a few yeah. weeks pocket money, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like all these things, they are something that once you've actually got felt and if you decide you need help with a particular job, then it's worth you investing in something. But if mm -hmm. it's like, no, I don't really need that, it's fine. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it, everyone's different. It's like me with my big machines that I'll show you now. It's like everybody does not need them. <laughs> but, you know, we're all, let me go. I'm going to come back to, in fact, let me put this over to my other camera. That makes it easier. There we go, because I'm going to show you. Oh, yes. Yeah, we're looking forward to this. Firstly... This looks like some sort of medieval contraption <laughs> torture chamber and because um, it's got spikes in it and it's it's called a picker. Okay. And when you've washed your fleece, it's still quite clumpy and, you know, it doesn't matter if you use your comfort liquid conditioner and whatever, it will still be clumped up and it's not good. You can't put it straight into your carding machine because your carding machine will just go. <coughs> mm -hmm. And, you know, and if you bought yourself a nice expensive carding machine, you've now put it through an awful lot of hassle that you don't need to so you can obviously like anything once again take hold of all the wool and just pull it apart or get one of these and but that's actually quite a lot of effort to do that if you've got a yes. few fleeces on the go it's fine if you've bought a little piece of wool and you've done a bit of washing and you don't but if you've got a few fleeces on the go you're going to be a bit so this so what machine, does this actually, yeah what does it actually do to the fleece so what you do is you basically Put the so you can see here where they're at. That's at uh, can you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's quite yeah. clumpy. So you literally put that, and you have this to protect your fingers, Ooh. so you can put it in. And it literally is two beds of nails, one below, one above, uh -huh. and it's just raking uh -huh. it backwards and forwards, which is why you need to do it outside. Yes. <laughs> Because yes. it all comes off. <clears throat> it all comes off the other side. And, you know, it's obviously not going to be perfect, but it's now okay for actually putting into your carding machine, which sits there. Right, yes. But it is a it's a bit of effort and it's an outside in the sunshine, probably with a glass of wine in the <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> oh, I don't know about the wine and the nails. <laughs> I live dangerously. <laughs> <laughs> Two beds of nails and a glass of wine. <laughs> so it's quite, Steve thinks the machine's hilarious because it's just like, oh my God, it looks like it's something out of, but obviously if you went to um, a proper mill, they have these really, really big ones. Uh, and, but that industrial is the dangerous field, machine sure. that has all the wire around it. So people don't fall into it because it's like, yes. you wouldn't want to get caught in that. But um, but that's what that does. And I do have lots of um, fleeces and things that I do go through and do in the summer. So it's de it's a summer job. It's an outside nice day. And would you, it, it goes in one end and, and it comes it out. The it eventually flies out the other end all over the place. And you then you run around the garden picking it all up because it's a... <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> what fun. And of course, it's just fluff everywhere, which is, you know... If if you don't mind fluff, it's all it's all good stuff. Um, None of us mind fluff. That's why we're in this business. Exactly, exactly that. So I'll um I'll just pop that on that. It's a big beast. This. <laughs> there we go. Oh, pop here it comes. For a sec. Because. Oh, um, we're gonna... Okay. So I've got my carding machine here. Mm -hmm. which I think we all know about carding machines, don't we? Yeah. Here we go. Okay. <coughs> Where we put... Now, I thought I'd got some fluff here. I'll pick some fluff up from down here. 
where we quite literally pop it in. And this is oh, where the get... carded bats come off. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. So that's because that's um, that's a nice smooth action that you need, which is why you need a picker to make it. Otherwise, I'd be going <coughs> as yes. I was trying to actually get it through. If it was lumpy, yeah. And um, depending on what state it is, you, I have to put it through a few times. But also, I can use it just for blending. If I've got, mm -hmm. like when I was doing my elephant and I needed tons of it, and then I blended on here because I right. needed a mass of it. But um, I do have blending but, boards and things as well. And as I say, I've got my little carders. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that carding machine, does the, the blended wool, it, it sticks to the, um, the little, little needles. Yeah. So basically, you've got a little roller here. Yeah. You've got a little roller here, yeah. which takes it in, and that is just the feeder. And then yeah. it takes it onto this bed. And that is where it then builds up to the top of the... I've got my hand on the, the little yes. wires. And then you take it off, literally. You just... Yeah. It's a bit like a candy floss machine. Yeah. <laughs> sort of it's a bit like that without the yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you have to get it at the right and it's one of those things that you need to actually have strapped down because like you're a real old chunk chunk oh chunk, yeah chunk, chunk. but yeah um, it enables me to um just do core wall as well as actually having masses of other colors and just say right okay i need a mass of that um i really like that put it through do it yeah. and um and this is my leftovers little can you see that uh -huh. uh -huh. i'll put yeah. it all through as core wall so that is just all my little leftovers that i've ever had chuck it in there and then one day i shall put it all through into a, a bat oh and that will just be my core and will it come out brown like plasticine oh, when you mix all the colors of plasticine together it always comes it always turns brown yeah. doesn't it <laughs> sometimes it's a gray tint sometimes a brown tint but it just depends <laughs> which is, you just make yeah. another elephant yes yeah. <laughs> basically yeah pretty much so i don't waste anything it all goes in there and then that becomes that and that becomes become your core, core because um your core um doesn't need to be white you know when you're when you're making something your core can be any color if you're going to be covering it with another another color and this is a blending board which is basically that same mat which is on the yes. um but it's just flat and you literally just pull colours mm -hmm. down and yep. add, add, and then you would smooth it down and put it off. And what's really lovely about that is when you buy it, they give you a little porcupine thing to flip it oh, off with. For lifting it off. I love that. <laughs> yeah. And is that also from Etsy? Um, so this, these are all made by the New Zealand company called Ashford, but I, there's, oh. um, it's a local company here, which you are online called Fibre Hut that I actually get all my um, bits and bobs from. So I, I buy them all from her. Um, the only thing which doesn't come from the Ashford to New Zealand is the picker, which was made by somebody in this country, but it was bought through Fibre Hut again because they, yes. you know, yes. I, they concentrate so, uh, mainly on spinning at Fibre Hut, but all these right. are preparations for spinning and knitting as well as for what we do. So, But that as a kind of, not, I mean, it's sort of entry level, if you like, car, um, for blending, that yeah. carding the board, I think would be great for yeah. people. I can so imagine. They call it a blending board. Blend. So... Um, and the idea is uh, you also get these little contraptions because you uh -huh. can roll it off and then it turns yeah. into what they call a rolag, which I think they use direct for spinning. But obviously I don't do that. Uh -huh. And so I just yeah. put it on and put it off. And yeah. But Lovely. I think they Lovely. cost about That's £100, pounds, something like that. Yeah. But once again, you can take off the mat and replace it once it's actually, so, you know... And it has got its little stand. And, and it can stand up. Mm. Yeah, so it stands at an angle so you can work at it. Lovely. I feel um, a purchase coming on, actually. Yes, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I should, I should be taking commission, shouldn't I, really? You should. <laughs> Brilliant. So my one other thing with huge um, are these combs. I don't know if have you ever... Have you ever seen the combs before? Oh. So what these I've... are used for... Yeah is rather than having them on the carding machine, which gives us nice, um, what do you, what, I'll say fluffed up bats. So you've still got mixed up fibers 
but they're mm-hmm. nice and fluffy to use. If you then decide, well, actually, I need some tops, so I need something which is going to be hair, so I need it to be straight, mm-hmm. they would be combed. And quite mm-hmm. often when you buy top um, fibres, it's because they've been combed through. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some wonderful videos by some American people doing this, you know, in their hands, and they're so experts at it, they're brilliant, which is why I'm not going to demo it because it's laughable, what I do, but... <laughs> But basically, it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but basically, you do have another one of these strapped to the deck, which is this one over here. Yes. And you layer your fibres on, and then you use this one to comb through it. And then the long hairs end up on this one, and uh-huh. the short little ones that are going to be useless stay on that one. So you okay. can then take that off. And in my case, put in my last basket to put through my carding machine, which I'll then use as some core. But it means I'm then left with the long. And the other way of actually um, then taking it off here is, um, I don't know what, I can never remember what the new name is, but it looks like a washer. It's basically, you know, around with a hole in it. And you pull it through and go across, and that's what gives you your nice long um, slither, as you were. Have you ever used um, a pasta machine? Yes. Because that's that process is reminding me of you know trying to make spaghetti with a with a <laughs> yeah with a pasta machine and it's all coming out the other end yeah. and you're like, okay. <laughs> but there are there are brilliant videos. Um, there's a couple of um, uh, ladies who I I I but it's their business. It's they work on a farm and so they do it all the time. So when you see them do it, you go, oh my god! You know, make it look Just so lots easy. Of practice. And, and, then you have a go yourself and go, oh, it's not, it's not quite as easy as I thought. But it is good fun and I do love playing. And, and so that's why, as you can probably understand, I've got so much wool and everything around because I have oh, play yeah. with it. Yeah, brilliant. Well, if it makes you happy. <laughs> oh, indeed, indeed. Makes you happy indeed. But um, Brilliant. Yes. So they're all, my, they're all my big machines. I'm just trying to think. I haven't got any other <clears throat> big machines, have I? No. But I still highly recommend. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. are. I, I use think them even now, for a few pounds, um, I think that's that would that's somebody. And in fact, that might be my first purchase. Yeah, because I just for me, when you're doing a project, you don't need any more than than this. And I remember when I was teaching my granddaughter. Um, how to needle felt and she loved these she used to she used to love come out to shows and demo and, and of course people used to love seeing it because she's only age 10 you know and she'd be going <laughs> <laughs> people love to watch somebody else actually doing something that they had no experience of, yeah. of doing themselves yes so I, I suppose I don't actually you know I haven't invested in any tools or carding machines or anything like that because you know what we do is we make kits and we're not expecting people to to then go and blend their own wool to to make a particular color. Although sometimes, you know, we just um, I show people just how to blend a small amount of wool by hand in your hand, yeah, which is, is good. But you know, the possibilities if you get yourself some of those um, hand carders, the dog brushes, um, that, that would take your felting to the next level. I think, yeah, it, make, yeah. it makes it unique because nobody else will have exactly that color. Mm. But we always say that that's that's always like the difference between um, you and I and our businesses is that you need to do things which are quick for people to do and quick for your team to do. Whereas yes. I can indulge myself in something which is going to take me an awful lot of time to do. Yeah, <laughs> but I love that kind of the, the, the way that um, what we do complements each other. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really good. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. Cool. Great. Well, well, I think we've got over our 30 minutes this time. I think we have a little bit. Oh, about 40 minutes. But how good was that? I loved all of those. um, Excellent fun. Chunky tools. (laughs) There was you saying you hadn't got any tools. You've got an array of them. (laughs) I did have a few. (laughs) Just little ones. (laughs) Brilliant. Oh, well. So I don't know what we're coming on to do in a month's time because I haven't looked at the list. So we'll just have to... um, surprise everybody next month and i can't even say that i know either so <laughs> it'll, be something, it'll be something fabulous yes absolutely <laughs> and we will manage to talk about it for 30 or 40 minutes no doubt. Yes, exactly exactly such good fun 
Excellent. Okay. Oh, so don't forget, everybody, to do your subscribing and liking and following. Yeah. Oh, no. That and one. Yeah. Click the little alarm so you know we're coming on next time. And we will let you know in seven days' time who the winners are. Brilliant. Excellent. Excellent. So well, we're completely in sync. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's goodbye from me. And it's good night from Joe. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. Bye.